call to the podium His Excellency Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada for the Laudatio for the European Commission. Bonjour, mes chers amis. I want to begin by thanking the World Law Congress and Javier Cremades for today's event. I want to acknowledge His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain, President Lasso, and all the dignitaries gathered here, and of course, and especially my dear friend Ursula von der Leyen, who we are all gathered to honor today along with the European Union. Mes amis, merci de vous être réunis aujourd'hui. It was almost 80 years ago that we laid down our weapons after the deadliest war humankind had ever seen. The Second World War left Europe in ruins. It sent millions of people to their graves, people from all over the world, including tens of thousands of Canadians. And it forced a reckoning. For centuries, Europe had been riven with conflict. The continent's history, marked by endless rivalries and individual ambitions that led to bloody contests over land, over language, over resources. I should know Canada was a direct byproduct of all of those. But by the middle of the 20th century, leaders understood that the machinery of war had become too dangerous to allow to continue this way. So from the ashes of the Second World War, the European Commission was born. It was created by those who believed that if we tied our fates together through shared prosperity and collective growth, if we respected the rights, freedoms, languages, and cultures of others in return for their respect of our own, if we transcended the destabilizing forces of our individual interests, and united ourselves in a community of values grounded in the rule of law. If we did that, we could overcome the brutal antagonism that had entrenched the continent for centuries and build a lasting peace. It was a triumph of imagination over history. La Commission européenne est devenue une institution clé qui joue un rôle central à l'échelle mondiale. Ensemble, les membres de la Commission européenne représentent la troisième économie mondiale et comptent un demi-milliard de personnes qui parlent plus de 24 langues, vivent dans 27 pays différents, pratiquent une myriade de religions et viennent de tous les coins du monde. The people, processes, institutions and democratic values at the core of the European Commission have enabled peace and prosperity to prevail in Europe over second seven decades now. This is the accomplishment we honor and award the European Commission with today. And to accept the award is my friend Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission. I've worked alongside Ursula for almost four years now. And I can tell you that she personally embodies the very best values of the European Commission. She is principled, she is compassionate, she is formidable, and she drives outcomes through respect and consensus. Canada, I suspect, was chosen today to speak to European success in part because, yes, our own history was shaped by the historical power struggles I mentioned earlier, but also because I think we too understand that in this day and age, differences and diversity can be made into a source of strength and resilience, not a source of weakness. President von der Leyen took her role at a time of uncertainty around the future of Europe. Brexit left many wondering if the Union would continue to hold strong. Euroscepticism was on the rise, and protectionism and authoritarianism were becoming more prevalent. Of course, this populism was not just European. Excessive nationalism was breaking through around the world, 
threatening the principles of collective prosperity. As choruses like America First got louder, both Canada and Europe felt fa held fast to our belief that growth doesn't come from putting up walls or turning inwards, which is why we were able to sign an incredibly ambitious trade deal together against a backdrop of protectionism and insular thinking. Canada and Europe both understand that we are at our best when we are all doing better. We have faced crisis after crisis that has proven this. Just a few months after Ursula took office as president, the pandemic hit, and her steady leadership made a real difference for Europe, but also for Canada and for the world. As a medical doctor and as a mother of seven, Ursula understood that we would only get through it if we got through it together. We had many, many conversations during that time. And she always emphasized that true resilience is only assured when we remain not just united by our values, but that we act on them. And that principle is at the very core of the European Commission. What underpins everything Europe and Canada stand for in our democracies around the world is the rule of law. Ursula has called the rule of law essential for the protection of the values on which our union is founded, democracy, freedom, equality, and respect for human rights. This place we're in today, the United Nations, is one of the other great peace-building institutions to rise from the ruins of the Second World War. And its foundational document is the UN Charter. 193 countries are party to this charter, and it is one of the key instruments of international law. Upholding and abiding by this charter is what has led to unprecedented peace, stability, and prosperity around the world which makes what Vladimir Putin is trying to do a problem for everyone, everywhere. L'évasion brutale et non provoquée de l'Ukraine par Poutine est une autre tentative d'imposer la loi du plus fort. Et s'il réussit, tout le monde va souffrir. C'est pourquoi le Canada, l'Union européenne et bon nombre de nos amis et alliés seront toujours là pour l'Ukraine. Canada has been an unequivocally strong supporter of Ukraine, as we may live across the globe, but we must advocate for them at all multilateral tables where each of us have a voice, particularly with emerging economies. Ursula has been absolutely unwavering in her own advocacy for Ukraine and for the rule of law in a European context that is complex. In a time of energy crisis and inflation, it's all the more difficult to hold political consensus, but Ursula has been an incredibly effective leader. She has galvanized European support militarily, financially, and politically for Ukraine's defense. And she has helped ensure that the democratic world remains steadfastly behind Ukraine and behind the principles for which it is fighting. Sovereignty, territorial integrity, the rule of law, and the right of peoples to choose their own future. She was one of the first foreign leaders to visit the country after the invasion began. She witnessed the atrocities in Bucha firsthand when there were still body bags in the streets. She understands the scale of the humanitarian crisis and demonstrated her compassion when, in those early weeks of the invasion, she brought the world together to provide refuge and support to the millions of people fleeing Putin's bombs. I was in Kviv last month, where I addressed the Verkhovna Rada. I spoke of how Ukraine is the tip of the spear that is determining the future of the 21st century. Alors, en tant que nation souveraine et unie, on doit soutenir l'Ukraine dans son combat, quoi qu'il en coûte et aussi longtemps qu'il le faudra. We cannot let 
authoritarianism win. We must ensure that borders mean something, that might never becomes right, that the ambitions and desires of one entity or of one individual do not stamp out the rights of others. The German writer Thomas Mann described democracy as being built on respect for the infinite dignity of each individual. We cannot take democracy for granted. The European Commission has shown that when we overcome our differences, when we embrace them and forge consensus, that is the most powerful driver of solutions in the world. And this is important because the future holds other enormous challenges. Ce sont les principes et les valeurs que l'on célèbre aujourd'hui qui nous permettront de lutter contre les changements climatiques et de protéger les gens de leurs pires conséquences. Under President von der Leyen's leadership, Europe has laid a path to being net zero by 2050. And many European nations have accelerated their work to meet this target as they've moved away from Russian fossil fuels and towards clean energy. And Canada, of course, is ready to be your partner in this work, from Germany investing in Canadian hydrogen to Romania drawing on Canadian nuclear ex energy expertise and solutions, among many others. In this highly uncertain moment, we must remember that security policy is climate policy, is economic policy, is social policy. The stability of the rules-based international order calls on us to unwind our dependence on commodities weaponized by authoritarian states as we protect the resilience of our economies from their whims, which means standing up to bullies and protecting those who are suffering the most while ensuring our middle class is strong and inequality does not take hold. This is a consequential moment, and it calls for thoughtful leadership and strong institutions. And I cannot think of a better embodiment of those than Ursula von der Leyen and the European Commission. You show us how respect for the dignity of all leads to the strength to protect peace no matter what. And this is what we honor today. Merci beaucoup,